Hello and welcome back to my channel. I am so glad you're here. Today I'm going to be doing a sit down Q&A video. I know that I'm just kind of restarting my channel and moving away from the weekly just recap videos and more vlog style content and I want to make sure that you know who I am and you're not just seeing a face on a screen talking to you. According to my YouTube analytics so far, around 50% of you are not subscribers and have found me through recommended videos on YouTube, so there's a good chance you have no idea who I am. So hi, I'm Ellie, and I thought that this would be kind of a great, one of the first videos that I post to my channel, so I asked my friends on Instagram to submit questions, but of course they know me already, so their questions were a little bit more um, specific, so I also Googled some just general get to know you questions, and I have compiled my list here on my MacBook. So I'm gonna take you through all of these questions. I've segmented them into categories. We're gonna go through general, and then I got a lot of questions about New York City specifically, and then lastly, questions about work and what I do for work. So let's get into it. We're gonna kick off with general questions. First question, how old are you? I am 28, I will be 29 in May. I feel like I forget my age way more than I actually should, but it's nice because Michael's the same age. So I just ask him how old he is and we go from there. But yes, I am 28. I'm a triple Gemini. I feel like now is also an important time to call that out. And it is one of my biggest personality traits. I'm not scary. I'm a good triple Gemini. I promise. Next question. Where are you from? I am from Texas. I don't know if that comes through via my accent or if my accent has kind of gone away. I feel like it ebbs and flows. But yeah, I'm from a super small Friday Night Lights-esque town in East Texas, about an hour and a half outside of Dallas. My hometown is great. Not for me, but great. I know a lot of people that still live there and love it so much. I'm not one of those people and I will never go back, but it was really good to me during my time there. Where did you go to school? I went to the University of North Texas for my first two years, freshman and sophomore year. After my sophomore year, I knew that I wanted to leave and I'll probably do another sit down video at some point going into that part of my life with my dad passing away and kind of like my mental health journey and everything that I went through during that time. But that is not for this video or we'd be here for hours. But anyway, knew I wanted to transfer from North Texas, wasn't really sure where I wanted to go. So I applied to the four big schools in Texas, Baylor, TCU, UT, and A&M and got into Baylor first. And I said, all right, let's pack it up and move to Waco, and I did. So I graduated with a degree in journalism, public relations, and new media from Baylor in 2018 with a minor in marketing. And I look back on my time at Baylor with fond memories. It brought me some of my closest friends. Ironically enough, some of my closest friends that went to Baylor I met in New York City, but we still have that bond. The next two questions go hand in hand. How did you meet your husband and how long have you been married? I met Michael back in the fall of, I think it was 2014. Then we were sophomores in college. We were introduced through mutual friends. One of my best friends to this day, Perry, introduced us one weekend while we were down in Austin. And when I say that we have literally spoken every day since the day we met, that is so true. It was truly one of those when you know, you know situations. And we've been together ever since. So I think nine years. We have been married for four years. We got married in 2019 in Austin where we were living at the time and every day since we got married has been the best day and he's my best friend and such a gem. Next question. How long have you had Scout? We have had Scout for eight years. He is our pride and joy, our only child at this point. He is the best dog, our best friend. He <laughs> grew up in a frat house, shout out UTATO, and then lived with Michael and I obviously in Austin. We were a little bit nervous about bringing him to New York and how he would adapt, but he loves the city. Central Park is his favorite place in the world, and we take him as often as we can. He's a great apartment dog. He is not necessarily lazy, but he's very content to just hang out. He has energy, but we make sure he gets his energy out with multiple walks per day. And then the rest of the day, he's just chilling with us. Last question within the general bucket is, do you want kids and when are you planning on having kids? That is the million dollar question, isn't it? Yes, we definitely want kids probably one or two. I'm not really sure on the number yet. Of course, God willing. When we are having kids, I think the answer changes daily. 
the best way that I can answer that question is when it makes sense, it makes sense. And I know that it never makes sense. I think we've both gotten to a place in our lives where we're feeling really settled and a lot more confident in our decision to have kids. I'm not sure that we're fully hooked on the idea of that being right now. I think within the next few years, absolutely. But right now, and I know it's so cliche, but we are both very career focused. We're both in really like areas of high growth within our career right now. And we're both really dedicated to chasing that growth. And of course, it doesn't mean that like having a kid will derail that. But I think that we just want to both be sure that we're able to give 100% to both areas of our lives. And right now we're being a little bit selfish and prioritizing our careers before we move into that next phase. So we'll see. That leads me into the next section of this Q&A, which is all about New York City. Lots of good questions about New York City. You are really putting me on the hot spot with this first question, but it kind of ties back to the last question, which is how long do you see yourselves being in New York City? If I've learned anything in my life, it's that you cannot predict the future. You cannot determine what's going to happen a year from now or even a month from now necessarily. So I don't have an answer to that. What I can say is that Michael and I are both incredibly happy in New York right now. As I mentioned, we're both very career focused and career driven and our careers at this time are in New York. It makes the most sense for us to be here. We have very established lives in the city. We have friends here. Of course, we have friends and family back in Texas as well, but we make sure that we keep up those relationships and keep those connections strong. And right now, what we need in our lives is to be here in New York. Again, there's always a chance that could change tomorrow, a month from now, a year from now. But for the time being, we're really happy here. And for the immediate future, we are grounding that in New York City. So will we make it back to Texas? Time will tell. But for right now, we are proud Upper East Siders. <laughs> I'm going to jump down to another question really quickly because I just said Upper East Siders. What is your favorite neighborhood? It's the Upper East Side, of course. We've lived here for four years. We've had opportunities to move to other neighborhoods and we've stayed here. I cannot express how much I love the Upper East Side. It feels so homey. It feels so much like a community. We know people in our neighborhood. Everyone here feels so friendly. It feels a little bit removed from like the hustle and bustle of downtown, but you still feel so connected to the city, which is of course why we moved here. My only qualm with the Upper East Side is how long it takes me to get to my office because my office is in the financial district and it takes me a good 45 minutes to get there, which might not sound like a lot. It used to take me an hour and a half to get home driving in Austin traffic, but when you're used to like the pace, the fast pace of New York City, 45 minutes to get to work is not it. Please hold. Poppy break. This video is not sponsored by Poppy, but if you happen to work for Poppy and you're watching this, hook a girl up. So there's my every side spiel. I'm convincing all of my friends to move up here and it's working. Other than that, I of course love the West Village, Greenwich Village, Soho. I love downtown. It is just not for me in terms of living there. I love to go there. I love the restaurants. I love the shopping. I love the energy, but living there is not it for me. I also love Brooklyn. I campaign probably once a month to move to Brooklyn and I don't know if it's actually going to happen because we love the Upper East Side so much and honestly they're pretty comparable in terms of like rental prices and things like that but Brooklyn's so fun. Maybe one day. Next question. What is the best part about living in New York City? For me, the best part of living in New York City is that I'm quite literally living out a dream that I've had since I was a child. I remember so vividly one New Year's Eve when I was probably five or six, I threw an absolute fit, screaming, crying fit, because all I wanted to do was go to New York to watch the ball drop. And ironically, I haven't been to Times Square to watch the ball drop and never will because why would I do that to myself? But I am living my dream every single day and every time I leave my apartment or honestly every time I'm in my apartment looking at my balcony, looking at the skyline, looking at whatever, 
is here that just feels so New York. It's a pinch me moment. I know that I am so privileged and so lucky to be living out a dream that I've had for so long. And I have not lost that magic in four years and I hope I never do. That is my philosophical answer to the best part about New York. Tactically, the best part about New York, I think it's just the culture. I grew up in such a small town, like I said, in East Texas, and as you can imagine, very lacking in culture and worldview. And moving to New York was the best thing for me in terms of just expanding my worldview and learning so much about different cultures, different religions, different just people who live different ways of life in general it has made me such a kinder person such a more accepting person so much more well-rounded in my beliefs and the way that i advocate for people i just feel like i've become the best version of myself through other people while living in new york which you're probably like aren't new yorkers the worst like they have her up for being mean and all these crazy things happen and it's so dangerous and no that's not true New York has genuinely made me the person I am because of the people that are here. Every day I learn something from someone that makes me a more empathetic person and that is something that I hope never changes. That's the best part about living in New York for me. The worst part about living in New York, I guess I'll kind of break this up again into like more of a mental thing and then physical. Mentally, obviously, it's very hard being away from our family and friends that are back in Texas. We have tried so hard to make an effort to stay really connected, to go back and visit as much as we can. And unfortunately this year in particular, a lot of unforeseen circumstances came up in our lives here that prevented us from going back as often as we would have liked to. But we are about to go back to Texas for two weeks and I'm so excited to spend quality time with friends and family and just soak up as much of that time as possible. Living so far away from them makes me appreciate the time that we have with them that much more. So that part is definitely difficult, but again, we have just grown to appreciate that special time so much more and I can't wait to get some of that quality time in just a few weeks. Physically, the worst part about living in New York is probably, it's kind of a double-edged sword because it's the most convenient place to live on earth, but it's also the most inconvenient place to live on earth. If I want to make pancakes and eggs and bacon for breakfast and I don't have the ingredients, I'm gonna have to trek to the grocery store on foot and then I'm gonna have to lug all those groceries back. I can't just hop in my car and drive down to H-E-B and get groceries for $10. Nope, I'm spending $50 to make that breakfast and I have to walk there and I have to carry all the groceries back and I have to carry them up three flights of stairs, which is, again, I try to remind myself in those moments, it's such a privilege to live here. It's such a privilege to like have these first world problems. And as annoying as it can be in the moment, it's really not that big of a deal and I'll get over it. But yes, for how convenient it is, it can also be so wildly inconvenient at times. I'll end the New York City portion of this Q&A with, is it really that expensive? Yes, it is so expensive. It's not unattainable. And there are definitely ways to do it a lot cheaper than how Michael and I live here. And there are ways to do it way more expensive than the way Michael and I live here. I feel like if you're making the decision to move to New York City, you have to go into it with the mindset of, yes, it's gonna be expensive. Yes, I'm gonna pay a million dollars for a shoebox. Not literally, but kind of. And you have to be at peace with that because you can kick yourself every single day for how much you're spending on things like rent. Or you can choose to say, okay, yeah, I'm spending kind of an ungodly amount on rent, but I get to live in my dream city. I live in New York City. You also have to think about the trade-offs. We make a lot more here than we would have made in Texas just because the cost of living is a lot higher. And you find ways to make things cheaper. Like we use public transportation. We are so comfortable with public transportation. It's oftentimes faster and it's significantly cheaper. You will catch us on the subway or bus 99% of the time unless I'm by myself and it's late or we are like carrying a lot of things or we're just like so so tired those are kind of the only times where we will take a taxi or an uber so yes it is that expensive but you plan for it you prepare for it you figure out make ways to make it work if it's something that you really want and again i want to say i am daily reminded of my privilege that I get to live out the stream life and that I live in New York City and that I can afford to live here and that I have a job that allows me something that is such a luxury that I could have never imagined would be my reality. I will never be over that feeling and 
I just am so eternally grateful that this has become my life. Moving into the last category for this Q&A video, I got a few questions about work, so I thought I would address those. The first question is, what do you do? I work in influencer marketing. That's so crazy to me because when I was in college, influencer marketing wasn't a thing and I absolutely didn't learn about it. I have one class called Mass Media and Pop Culture and I think we had like one lesson where we talked about the Kardashians. The way that influencer marketing has blown up, the industry is just absolutely bonkers and I could talk about it for hours, but to sum up what I do in a pretty little package with a bow, I work for an agency that represents brands. So I'm the middleman between the brand who's running a campaign and the influencer who gets paid to post content for the campaign. So my clients are brands and then the brands will come to us and say, hey, we have this much money. We want to run this campaign about this. Go find us influencers. I then go to talent agents and say, hey, I have a brand who wants to do this. Send me your talent that fit. And then we get into all the tactical of contracting and negotiating and all that good stuff. I am more than happy to do a more in-depth video about my job and the ins and outs of influencer marketing since it is still a really new career. Let me know if that's something you would be interested in, but in a nutshell, that is what I do. Next question. Favorite person I've worked with in my job. I get this question a lot and it's actually pretty hard to come up with an answer because I've been really fortunate to work with such a vast spectrum of talent from really small micro influencers who are just incredible to work with because they're so grateful and so humble and so willing to do whatever it takes to get the campaign right. And then I've worked with like multi, multi, multi million followership celebrities and influencers who are equally as great, but you just really can't compare the two. Objectively, the coolest person I've worked with is probably Emily Ratajkowski. That was for a dairy milk campaign last year. Definitely the biggest partner I've worked with and just such a fun and creative campaign to work on. Subjectively, in terms of like who is just phenomenal to work with, um, I really love working with Lindsay Arnold. She's such an angel, so sweet to work with. Always gives us exactly what we need. Just an absolute joy to work with. Anna Sitar is a newly uncovered favorite for me. I was familiar with her prior to working with her for Las Vegas Grand Prix, but I really got to know her while we were on the trip and she is the most genuine, kind person I think I've ever met. So she is a star. Emily Abigail, gonna shout her out. She's a smaller influencer. I believe she works for Lauren Ireland of Summer Fridays. She's New York City based. I did not work with her directly, but um, we worked with her on one of the brands that I was on and just always heard such great things about her. I just love when creators are kind and appreciative and willing to do what it takes to make it work. And if you are humble and a good worker, good creator, provide good content, you get a gold star in my book. Next question, coolest part of your job? There are so many cool parts of my job that I was actually thinking about this the other day and the coolest part of my job is how quickly I got a seat at the table. I have always been very ambitious and in fact in my first job one of my bosses at the time told me that I was too ambitious and was intimidating some of my other coworkers which has sat with me my entire career. And I found that in the years following until I got to Village, that was often kind of the narrative that I heard was like, oh, well, what are you gonna do to prove that you deserve this? How are you gonna prove to us that you deserve this spot? Which of course is valid in a sense, like you have to earn what you're given, but I, always give 110%. If you know me, you know that, especially if you know me as it relates to work. I love my job. I'm going on a tangent right now, but I feel like it's very rare to have your dream job and feel that passionately about it so many years later. I love what I do. I love where I work. I love the people I work with. And yeah, not every day is perfect. Not every month is perfect. And we've had some rough patches and that's fine. And that happens. And no job is going to be sunshine and rainbows and butterflies all the time. But at the end of the day, I love my job every day. And even in my worst moments, I don't wanna leave. I don't wanna change industries. I never have like a sour taste in my mouth about what I do or wonder if I'd be happier somewhere else or doing something else. And 
that has paid off for me. I've put in so much hard work and I just keep getting such amazing opportunities that I'm so grateful for. And at my current job, I feel like my opinion is valued. My opinion is heard. I feel so intelligent. I am so uplifted and so empowered to be the best version of myself as it relates to my work. And I'm challenged every day, which is something that's really important for me. So all that to say, the coolest part of my job is that it is my dream job and I become a better version of myself every day because of it. And of course, <laughs> the opportunities that I'm given in terms of like travel and the people that I get to work with. I was at the Las Vegas Grand Prix two weeks ago. Like how cool is that? I've gone to monster truck races in the desert and I've been to Detroit to like Ford factories and I've just gotten so many experiences that are so, so, so cool. And I've met so many amazing people in the industry or as creators or that work for these brands. And I just love what I do so much. And that's the coolest part. If you can't tell by the literal tangent, I just went on. <laughs> Next question. How do you get into the industry? So as I mentioned, this industry is still relatively new. Back in 2018, when I graduated college, nobody was talking about influencer marketing and I kind of fell into it. I feel like I got into it when it was still, again, very emerging. And over the last two or three years, it has just expanded infinitely, which is really beneficial for people who want to break into it because there is no prerequisite. It helps, of course, if you have marketing experience, but I know at least at my agency, that's not a requirement. And if you don't have marketing experience, that's fine because you're going to learn and we're going to help you and teach you. And every single day, the industry changes. So every single day, you need to be willing to show up and learn, which I think is something that can be really unique about influencer marketing and marketing in general. It's for eternal students. You need to be willing to show up and throw yesterday's tried and true out the window because it might not be tried and true anymore. And so all that to say, the best way to break into the industry is to start having conversations with people in the field, shadow people, ask them about their jobs. If you're in college and you're thinking about doing it, get internships. Don't let not being in the industry already hold you back because that is not a prerequisite. You can adapt any skill sets to fit into marketing. I will say the one caveat is that you have to want it. And if you want it, you can make it happen. Last question with work is, will I stay in influencer marketing forever and will I stay at an agency forever? This is a great question. Right now, I am so happy. Right now, I am continuing on the path that I am on. I am so happy in my role, so happy at my agency, so happy with the people I work with, the brands I work with. And I love the fast paced nature of agency life. That said, I don't know that it's forever and I don't know that agency's forever. I might wanna go in-house one day. I do know that I have very high ambitions and I would love to be CMO one day of a Fortune 500 brand, but I might also be a CEO of an agency. We'll see. Those are the goals though. So I'm very happy where I am right now. Yes, I wanna stay within this realm forever, but we'll see. Okay, I've been talking for 30 minutes it's actually kind of difficult to talk about yourself and answer questions or maybe that's just a me problem but anyway i hope this video was interesting for you if you have more questions please drop them in the comments below and i'll answer them in real time if you want specific videos about my job or new york city or our move to new york city or wedding planning even any niche videos that you want about anything I've talked about in this video, please comment. I would love to make them. I think these sit down videos are so fun and I want them to be a conversation because I want to get to know you too. So let me know what you thought. I will see you in my next video. Bye.